Hi, um, I'm Patrick Schmidt. Um, this is my work. I combine hard edge and color field techniques with a digital sensibility to um, explore the language of um, geometric abstraction. To get something like this kind of imagery, I'm gonna take patterns from that I've collected from around the world. Everything from Islamic patterns to propaganda imagery to psychedelic tie dyes and everything in between and I digitize them to reduce them to a line drawing so I can project them onto the canvas and then um, I draw it all out. I then do another one, draw it over top of it. So we lose the initial identity, if you will, of the original source and to come up with something more universal. And I'm thinking more compositionally. And then I isolate every single shape and then paint it individually, um, which makes this kind of painting take anywhere between six months and a year. I'm always thinking about the color in terms of opticals. I'm thinking about it in terms of color theory. I'm thinking about it in terms of social political ramifications of, of the color. The easiest ones to think about are the violet and orange of, of FedEx. You know, we see that. It's part of, we see it on the highway, we don't think about it. We see it in a painting and we go, oh, that's kind of a nice color combination, but we have no recollection of why. And it's because of that association. And like, like it or not, those have political ramifications. Several months ago, when we, put, when we looked at a blue and a yellow, we didn't think about Ukraine. Now today, it's, it means something totally, totally different. So when I'm putting a color down, all of those, that history of that specific kind of you know, value of color, I'm aware of all of that. I've always been a colorist, but I've really been, I have been playing with um, optical perception um, use of color. And, and I've been really interested in this false sense of, of transparency. In this body of work, these are all laid in. It's not just a color over top of a color. It's an isolated shape with a color that's laid in that doesn't necessarily work in terms of a traditional transparency. The work on paper is to isolate just that activity um, away from the paintings. Um, I like that I can just draw it out, boom, I can do one of these in a couple of days uh, or several over the course of a couple of days. These came about from uh, a residency I did in Cosenza, Italy in summer of 2019, right before the pandemic. Did a big installation in the, in the space that was given to me and then I did these smaller works on paper that were all based off of the shapes that I was creating in the, in the, in the space. And when I got back into the studio, it just made sense like, oh, let's take it from drawing into painting, the realm of painting, and really focus on color and then move from there. And that's how these started. There's 45 here and I have more at home. These are acrylic on paper, which means <clears throat> They're relatively easy to do in the sense of you put the, the color down, it soaks right into the paper, and you can do a second coat almost immediately because of the, the accessibility of the paper to the uh, material. These do take on a more of a minimalist approach as opposed to the maximal of the, of the other paintings per se. And I'm really f f able then to isolate and just play with a few color and color combinations and that is it's refreshing it's it's kind of exhilarating you know when i'm do when i have three or four on my desk at, at you know in my studio it's really exciting to walk in and go yeah okay and then i can take what i'm doing there and immediately walk over to the other side of the room and develop that or put that color directly on a, on a painting and begin to play with this over here um, you know, which might suggest that these are more studies, but I don't think of them as studies per se. These are works as individuals. This one is actually based on a very traditional 
Amish quilt pattern, which is called the tumbling block. And so it's essentially blocks that are all stacked together. Think MC Escher-ish. And I put it into the computer, the image, and I just went just a little, and you can begin to see it here, here, and here. Like this is the top, side, front, and the side, right? And so I am looking at quilts. I am, I am trying to pull in the traditional and really push it forward to something, something new. I have been looking at um, modern as well as very traditional, uh, the propaganda imagery of, of repetition uh, from the Cold War era. I'm looking at Islamic patterning from um, Spain as well as the, the northern region of, of Africa. Um, geometric abstraction is really something that came out of last century, mid-century even, and so how do you make it relevant for today? How do you make it new? How do you make it accessible to the new viewer? And, and one of the ways is color, another way is to take something from the past and tweak it, then superimpose um, the traditional back into it, and then play with that. Someplace in the last several years, um, I began to take the idea that I was, what I was doing in the bigger, larger works, and <clears throat> I wanted to begin to play with more transparency and ultimately bring in geometric shapes that, that I can superimpose inside the, inside the painting itself. So I have a digital painting or a digital image, and then I have this other image that is, again, a fragmented digital image. The viewer could think about it, about the work, in, in that meditative quality in the same way that we would enjoy a sand mandala that a Tibetan monk would be putting out. Yes, it's colorful. Yes, it's, um, in, in many ways, it's over the top in terms of color. But at the same time, there is this sense of it's the roundness. When you lose yourself within the painting, you begin to find more things. And when you find more things, that's when you slow down and that's how you really get to enter into the work. And the more you look into the work, the more you see.